All right. I believe we are live and here on our Saturday new studio. A little bit different setup. Not a whole ton, but a little bit. As I hope you can see, we have got our overhead looking down um, adjustment made to it a little bit so that when I am wearing a hat, hopefully I don't block it a whole ton. Uh, changed up the way our lights are. I can see this one here on the side screen is a little annoying. I may have to change that. And then we've got one that we'll utilize in different ways, but I thought while we're working on miniatures, that one could show the back of it so that you can see some of the progress. But um, we'll move that one around on and off. Um, sometimes we'll display some incense burning. Who knows? Who knows? But new studio, you can see on the screen on the right, a little bit different look. I've got a lot yet to do to get it put together, including <clears throat> behind me here, this whole wall here is going to be hung up of minis. That's going to be the shelf of shame or the wall of shame, I should say. Um, behind me on the lower camera, uh, I know you can't see it super well, but that is bins for finished miniatures. And yeah, a lot more to do, but it's been a while since I have been able to paint on stream. So I want to get into that. I have my dragon we worked on recently still on the table. I've still got my spider. You can see the wet palette over here. Today, I've got a couple of things that I'm working on actually. I am smoking a brisket, so... I am going to have to get up a couple of times just to check temps, make sure everything's working real good there. Um, but uh, additionally, I wanted to work on this miniature here. So we'll see with the camera how that is out of the light quite a bit. So this miniature here is a 3D print that a player of mine got for me. And... Um, I was looking for a miniature for a campaign that I just started this last week. And this is one of the uh, nemesis that the campaign centers around. So some of the aspects that I really liked was the armor. It has all these big spikes to it. Um, it the two blades. So the aspect of the character has two blades rather than a lance that they would normally carry. Um, but just a fantastic dynamic moving sculpt, which I really like. So that's what I wanted to do. Now it is heavily armored. <clears throat> Pardon me. So it's going to get lots of blues and grays in it. And because it's going to have lots of blues and grays in some of the elements, including the pants that you can see, um, the loincloth that you can see, uh, the rest of it really is going to be pretty heavy metal colors. So I thought today I would start with the pants just so we can start putting some of those initial colors on. And because the armor is going to have lots of blues as well as gray in it, I wanted to really um, set some differentiation up. So to do that, we're going to be using some browns and yellows. Really yellows are going to be the that kind of main tone. And some of these, you can see there is earth brown, blonde shadow, and blonde hair. So those yellows, the blondes, are part of the triad for blonde hair, obviously. But because they are a more, I want to say a more dull yellow, they've got a little more brown tint to them. So they're not quite as vibrant as, say, a cardinal yellow or a lemon yellow. <clears throat> a lot more earth tony to them. So for me, those ones play really well into this villain. I don't want it to be very bright and um, colorful. I want it to have good contrast in colors without being colorful. So as I'm picking some of my colors, that's kind of how I think about it. I can still put in those offsetting colors without making it too vibrant or bright. Um, 
you can see that there on the screen. That is the blonde shadow. And just a very dull brownish yellow. And then the earth brown next to that. I'm going to wait before I put on the blonde color. It's because we, even though we've got some high humidity, it is pretty dry in here. So I am taking my glasses off. I've got my screen nearby so I, I can see if anything pops up there. But I may have to pop my glasses back on to read if you leave any comments. So just going in. Oh, there's actually some chain mail on the underside of those legs as well. So good to know. Good to know. And because this is the first coat, I am just going to overpaint. Because then when I paint. the armor aspects of this figure, it will clean up those edges. And again, not a whole lot to do here. This is a, oops, got an air bubble there, pretty small space. But not too bad. Not too bad. Now, in addition to this, <clears throat> I do want to go through and I'm going to get my vampiric flesh tones. This is also a triad from a Reaper. So you've got vampiric shadow, vampiric skin, and vampiric highlight. So these are basically, think of them as just a very washed out, uh, extremely washed out flesh tones. So no reds to them whatsoever. Now these ones are not going to show on screen, but I'm going to do the same thing and put my vampiric skin, my mid tone, in the center. And then I'm going to put the shadow in. And I'm going to wait on the highlight. I'm using a size one brush, so it's a little bit big, but because these are just the beginning stages, I'm not super worried about it. So there are little elements of the, I've got a hair, hold on. Little elements of the arm that are showing. As well as the hands. So I just want to paint those flesh elements. And the reason I am using this vampiric is because this villain is undead. So, and it is on the table next to or nearby the player characters, it will be very apparent that this guy is not like them. And again, just doing some overpainting here. <clears throat> Earlier, before I started the stream, I was working a little bit on some of my bases. I got some very beautiful foam that I was able to utilize. Start putting together some of the bases for my competition entries. 
it was actually kind of hard to stop that to do some painting because I was making good progress. I thought maybe, maybe for this stream, we'll just work on basing, but I have been looking forward to getting into some painting here in the new space, seeing how the lighting works and all of that. This is definitely a bit of a challenge versus when we were working on the dragon where we had a hard time keeping it on screen and my hat was blocking it and everything. I may actually bring the camera down a little bit just so we can focus here a little bit more. Have it a little larger in the screen anyhow. And you can see this miniature, I've just got it with some blue tack onto a Diet Coke bottle top onto my handle. So plenty of room to hold. And looking to see, we've still got a little bit of shine in some of that blonde hair color there. So I'm going to give it a moment before I start putting on a second coat. And then you can still see quite a bit of the dark showing through in the areas where I added that flesh. So same thing, we're going to give that plenty of time to dry. Now the slit in the helmet is extremely small, so normally if it were a little bit wider, I'd put some of the flesh tones in there to see if I could capture any details of the face. But with this character anyhow, there's <clears throat> really no details in there, so I'm going to leave it just um, without touching it. That way, as I paint it, um, if I do a dark wash, it'll sink in there and just be void, so less humanist less human-like, um, a little more hollow and dead. These hands are drying up pretty good. Let's go ahead with our second coat here. don't remember the sculptor for this miniature. Like I said, one of my players 3D printed this. Just started a new campaign, so I'm going to have a lot of PCs to paint coming up. I don't know if we'll get those on stream or not. We will see. But some good characters so far. I'm excited to see how they are in the game. That looks like chainmail to the front, so we're going to leave those. <coughs> so again, this is going to be the contrasting aspect for the miniature. Had a lot of different ideas. Um, on color tones. So I'm going to incorporate red into the loincloth area. 
um, as well as a little bit of freehand. Not much just because the space is so small, but a little bit. And hopefully that will allow me to put in the symbol for the character. And he does have a very specific symbology. Now once this dries, what I'm going to do is use those shadow tones, the brown and the vampiric shadow for the flesh. I'm just going to water those down a touch and make them a wash, and I'm going to wash the miniature with those. It's going to do two things. It's going to tint the color that we laid down into those darker tones, but it's not going to completely saturate them to those dark tones. That way I still have a lot of light tones in those aspects. And then as I highlight up, it's going to be less transitions that I have to have to do to get into those lighter tones. So with small areas like this, anything you can do to make those transitions smooth and as small as possible, that's the ticket. And of course, we just have to wait for everything to dry. I've still got a lot of paints to put up and put away. Um, I've still got a lot of stuff that I have to unbox and unpack, put up on the walls. So a lot left to do yet, but uh, space seems to be working pretty good so far. So I'm pretty happy, pretty excited. I'm going to start with the flesh bits. Thin this down into a wash. Try to do it without breaking the paint. This is going to allow these darker tones to sit down in the deepest aspects, the fingers, space in the fingers, anything like that, and start adding in a bit of shadow. <clears throat> That one won't be quite as noticeable as when we do the brown onto the blonde. Well, this is where we'll really see more contrast just because we are going from blonde to brown. And I don't know how well the camera is going to capture it right off the bat. But, of course, once we post it on Instagram and everything, it will just really show those shadows pretty well. And we'll give that a moment to dry. I should have had another miniature that needed the same tones ready to go so that I could paint something else while those are drying. Uh, generally, I try to have two aspects ready to go, or two miniatures so that I can keep the paint going, but a little less prepared today. Oh, you know what? Here's what we can do. I have got a zombie. that while I'm waiting, grab a little bit smaller brush. Get a little bit of a hair on him. We'll do the same thing with his kind of 
torn up pants. generally with these zombies I like to do their pants in like purples because the school flesh tone has a lot of green to it it really contrasts really well but this is not going to hurt and it's one more closer to the finish line for me miniatures that I can finish, the more I can get off my shelf of shame. And we'll give that a moment to dry. And we'll do a second coat, a little more edging. And then a wash. For these zombies here, the uh, sculpt is called Zombie George. I use them when I'm doing some of my painting classes quite a bit just because they come in multiple packs or come in multi-packs I should say that's a better way to say it. So super affordable. The sculpts are really pretty clean So lots of good detail sculpted in. But most importantly, if you are newer to miniature painting, these are just zombies. So if you mess up things like the eyes, it doesn't make any difference because they're zombies. So I love utilizing this guy for any time I'm teaching classes. Especially if we're focusing on things like eyes, brush control, flesh tones, even though I use the ghoul flesh tones, it's a great way to get in the use of using triads <coughs> and getting really good results. And lots of good opportunity to work on things like edging for your brush control.
go. There is the blonde aspect, which actually stands out pretty good from that green flesh tone. I would probably have liked to have dark lined it a little bit just for more separation, but I think as we add on our shadow tone, it will help with that. As we go through and apply that, that is going to slide into the crevices and then it will dry there giving us good shadows and a deeper tone This brush cleaned and not too bad a separation there. Once that dries, then we can do the bit of highlighting and it'll really stand out. So, for our highlight color, again, we're working on very small areas. So it does not take much, very, very little. Well, one drop of each of these is actually too much just because the space that we have to work with is so minute on these little miniatures. Back to my small brush. Get those bristles nice and damp. Make sure we've got good flow on our paint. And then I just want to bring up a few little highlights. Where is the light hitting? Very, very few elements that we need to get. Let's go back to our zombie George. Same thing. Where is the light going to be the strongest? Do a little bit of highlighting on the highest points, the highest areas. Here's where we've got a little bit of torn aspect.
go. Get that brush nice and clean. those highlights laid in there. Makes it stand out from that flesh quite a bit. Now the zombie itself, I still have to do the mouth, a couple of little wounds. So I use a little bit of a deeper um, brownish red color for those aspects because I don't want it to look moist and alive. I want it to look dried out and dead. And then brown on the base, which so this miniature is already sealed. So I'm just going to go through and put down some of this earth brown on this base. I've still got more painting to do on it, but I can give it another coat of sealant and seal in the colors that we've added as well as this brown tone. That will lock those colors in so that any additional painting that we do, we're not rubbing it off. So that'll help me use up some of the browns that I have on the wet palette. That way I'm not wasting paint. and get this bad boy one more step closer to being done. And we'll put him on the side to dry. <clears throat> For those elements, like I said, I've still got the red aspects to do, but I've got three other zombies besides him to do, so nothing that's going to be done today. Wow, we've already done a half an hour. That's pretty exciting. All right, now for the highlight on our flesh. So again, this is going to be areas where the light is going to be most focused on these flesh elements. So raised muscle areas, the elbows, and then a little bit of work on the hands. Now to highlight these, you can actually go through with pure white and hit the knuckles. That would really make those aspects stand out even stronger. I don't have my pure white near me. Um, I've still got to work on some, uh, like I said, some paint unpacking. So I'm not going to do that aspect today. Just like that, we have those aspects all done. And I thought that would take me a little bit longer. I figured we would go about 45 minutes. So while this is
covering those aspects, I think what I'm going to do is you got to look at the layers from the bottom to the top. This chain mail is under the loincloth there, which is red. And that chain mail on the leg is underneath that as well. So I think what I'm going to do So this is West Barrow Slate. So this is a bluish gray color. Um, it's not quite black. You can see it's pretty, pretty well light toned. But what I'm going to do is utilize this as well as just a touch of pure black. I'm going to blend the two. That is going to be the base tone of the metal. So I've got my size 2 brush is what I used for it. To utilize that up before I move to a smaller brush, I'm just going to go with big areas here. That way I can get a lot of paint off of this brush. So I'm not wasting paint because I use this brush to blend. And you can see compared to the black base coat, that more blue tone coming through there. Or I hope the camera is able to pick that up. So this villainous miscreant is going to play a big aspect in the campaign I just started for the nemesis of one of the players directly, well, one of the player characters directly, as well as the tier two and tier three story elements. So a super important aspect of the campaign. This guy is going to be featured heavily in it. And like I said, have a big, big aspect into one of the player characters story arcs. When he makes his debut on the table, I am hoping it is too much fanfare with my players. And still using my big sized brush, just so I can set a lot of paint at once. It's nice and thin. After blending, I did add a touch of water so that it flows really well and is very thin. Now we're getting into some areas near I've already painted, so be very careful in aspect. I do like how this is already giving it a bluish tint to the figure.
get elements for me to bring in those contrasting colors and have them play against each other. as this highlights up it'll have a little bit more and more of the blue tone This will clean up those edges really nice. Push those fabric elements in. Have them sitting below. and highlight the details that were sculpted in by the artist. little trick in a couple of those spots they are pretty tight especially on those greaves or uh, van braces rather. <clears throat> We've got those elements of flesh both above and below with the hands and the exposed elbow areas. And then this is just its first coat so I just want to have nice clean edges and a good clean opacity to the paint a lot of the detail areas we get even more detail added highlighted as we work on the next steps up
rinse over, make sure I've gotten everywhere. Now I'm not doing the blades the same color because those are going to be Hellfire blades. So I'm actually going to attempt to make those look like they are glowing. So do some OSL on that. It is not going to require the same tones as the armor. The armor, however, will be reflecting some of the glow. So based on that, once the armor is all finished, I'll have a good idea on those highs and lows of the armor itself. That way I can make the OSL follow the pattern that I put in with where the other light is coming from. So I can play off of the uh, reflected light as well as the uh, I call it overhead light, ambient light. So even though it's a villain, I'm still going to have the light source coming from above. So a lot more highlighting done on higher parts up to the top. And then the reflective light, because of the way it's angled, kind of moving forward and leaning forward, the lighting, the highlighting for those front aspects is going to come from the glowing blades. So that's my goal. I think that'll give me good highlighting for both the back and the front to separate it and um, be able to call it out really, uh, really well on both planes. Keep that dynamic movement really highlighted well and really make a badass looking villain for my players to have to deal with. So the next aspects on this bad boy here is going to be highlighting just with the West Barrow slate. Um, directly and then I'm going to use this probably with a lighter gray for the following tone after that and then just the lighter gray and then the lighter gray mixed with some um, a pure white for the highlight and then just pinpoints of the bright white for the reflected light so next on this one is going to be West Barrow Slate directly just this beautiful blue gray color um, I think that's what we're going to have for our show now. i got to go check my barbecue. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for uh, watching if you're watching this live. Thank you for watching the VOD if you catch it on VOD. And uh, watch progress on the studio continue to improve. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.